Hello, I'm Pastor Toby Philpart, moderator of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. Part of the church's success relies on our ability to adapt. Our goal is to shift from the traditional method of multiple offerings and create a covenant partnership with you, our family. This allows for us to effectively do ministry in the areas of mission, evangelism, and education. As a covenant partner, you would gain access to our corporate partners, our digital resources. You would become our ally in kingdom building. The steps to becoming a covenant partner is very simple. Visit fecbaptist.org. Make a minimum pledge, which can be given incrementally throughout the calendar year or all at once. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it even entered into the imagination of thought what God has in store for those of us who love him. God bless you. Hello, I am Pastor Toby Philpart, moderator of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. The Florida East Coast Baptist Association aims to effectively do ministry through evangelism, missions, and Christian education. In a short period of time, we have been able to do so. We've created nearly 100 covenant partnerships as of date, allowing us to fund over $1,100 to each of those respective areas. But we have just begun. Our goal as we approach our annual session in February is 150 partners. We can achieve this goal only with your help. So please help us make an impact in kingdom building and experience the spiritual joy of knowing what it feels like to be able to proudly say, I too am a covenant partner. My name is Melinda Collins and I am president of the Women's Department of the Northern Fellowship and I too am a covenant partner. Good day, I am Pastor Benjamin H. Parrott Sr. I am grateful to serve as the president of the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association District Congress of Christian Education and I too am a covenant partner. Hi, my name is Lawana Parrott department head for the youth and young adult of the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, I'm Pastor Howard Bebar Jr., Northern Fellowship President of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. I'm too a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Woodrow Hay. I'm an administrative assistant for Florida East Coast. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Deacon Raymond Smith Sr. I am the president of the Layman's Men Auxiliary for the Florida East Coast Baptist Association, and I too am a covenant partner. Hello, I am Angela Shellman. I serve as chairman of the scholarship committee of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Reverend T.T. Shellman Sr. I'm the first vice moderator for the Florida East Coast Baptist Association, and I too am a covenant partner. Hi, I'm Sister Gloria Jackson Davis. I'm the Woman's Auxiliary President of Florida East Coast Baptist Association, and I am a covenant partner. Hello, I'm Calvin A. Davis Sr., Pastor of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, third Vice Moderator of the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hi, I am Pauline Stinson Scott, the president of the Women's Department of the Southern Fellowship. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Larry Lovett. I am the second vice moderator of the Florida East Coast Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, I'm Sanja Philpart. I am a member of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association and I too am a covenant partner. Hello. My name is Pastor Demetric Ford. I am a Vice President of the Northern Fellowship of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association, and I too am a covenant partner. My name is Samilia Shellman, and I represent the Florida East Coast Baptist Association as the Junior Red Circle President of the Florida General Baptist Convention, and I too one day will be a covenant partner.
Hello, I am Pastor Toby Philpart, moderator, Florida East Coast Baptist Association. And I've come again to tell you the great things that are happening with our Covenant Partner Program. I brought some team members here with me. Listen, if you will. Hello, I'm Johnetta Colson from New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Boynton Beach, Florida. I am the youth director of the Northern Fellowship of this Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association. I am a covenant partner, but not alone. From south as Florida City and as north as Coco, men, women, and even young people are a part of this covenant fellowship. We do believe in the covenant partnership. Hi, my name is Ben Parrott II. I'm from Miami, Florida, from Christian Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. By becoming a partner in the covenant, you will be assisting us in three areas. That will be the mission, evangelism, and education. Hi, I'm Dr. Rosalind Osgood, Chief Executive Officer of the Mount Olive Development Corporation, the community outreach arm of the historic New Mount Olive Baptist Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I am a covenant partner, and you too can become a covenant partner by going to the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association's website at www.fecbaptist.org, click Become a Covenant Partner. You can make a one-time donation of $240 like I did, or you can make monthly donations. Join me in kingdom building. Become a Covenant Partner. So now, you know the who, the what, the how. Can I tell you why? Become a covenant partner to be part of the mandate that Christ has given us. Mission, education, and evangelism. Partner with us today in kingdom building. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father, we come in the name of Jesus to tell you thank you for life, health, and strength, and for all of your abundant blessings upon us. Our dear God, we ask that you will bless us as we are assembled as the Southern Fellowship for this Florida East Coast Baptist Association. Bless the leadership of our association, and then bless the leadership of this Southern Fellowship. We pray, dear God, that you would bless us one and all. And as we tabernacle together virtually, we pray that the Father, that the songs that will be sung, that they will be harmonious and glorious unto your ears. We pray that the prayers that we pray, that they will be heard and answered by thee. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the information that will come to us, that it will be beneficial to us. And then we pray, dear God, for the word that will be brought to us by various messengers. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would anoint them and allow them to be able to bring a rainbow word. Bless us as we are recipients of all of these things. Help us and keep us. Bless us, not only at this time, but for the days to come. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. We greet you in the name of our Savior, he who is worthy to be praised. Uh, we thank God for this golden opportunity for uh, the meeting of our Southern uh, Fellowship of Forty Coast Baptist Association. We do give honor to our moderator, Toby uh, Philpott, and to uh, our women president, Sister Gloria Davis, as well as our youth, uh, Sister Judy Gilchrist, and Deacon John Turner, who is our layman's president. We come today in a somewhat different setting, uh, an advanced union meeting due to the holidays and uh, the pandemic is still raging, but we still come to do God's business. So therefore, we thank God for the opportunity uh, for this Monday and Tuesday. And as president of this Southern Fellowship of Fort East Coast, I do call this union into order 
in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Good evening as we start our afternoon section. We will start with a workshop. And our workshop leader, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Jimmy O'Brien, who is our lecturer and our facilitator for this hour. He's also our children of the board. Uh, directors for the 40s Coast Baptist Association. He's the only official pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church of uh, Liberty City. As he come, let us hear ye him. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Liberty City. This year we're celebrating Christ and all of us. We want to invite you to our sanctuary today and thank God for our moderator, uh, Reverend Phil Pod, and our various officers in our association, especially to Dr. William Ramsey, who is the president of our, of our Southern Fellowship. We've come to share some information on going back into our church. We, 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 have, we have been now uh, back in our church on a soft basis since last June inviting various groups at various times and so we want to share with you uh, the items and things we did uh, to get back into the church we were blessed because of the fact since brian was part of the national team of, of, of nurses and medical folk and other preachers throughout the country uh, working on this on this uh, particular project and getting our baptist churches back um back open and operating and, and, and when our people come up, certainly to our church, the first thing they see, of course, is that masks are required. We are, we are, we are doing our best to make sure that we follow all uh, COVID-19 protocols. Uh, we're practicing social distancing, and also we take temperature screens. So let me suggest that you have those items in place. Certainly, making sure that you, if you, you purchase um, uh, temperature. Uh, uh, Machines that take the temperature either the forehead or on the wrist, and they're, they, they, they're not that expensive, but they are important. And of course, uh, looking at the side of your sanctuary, you have to decide how many you can get in and still do the social distancing piece. Now, come on inside as we continue uh, to share with you what we've done uh, here at church. As you enter our vestibule, you will see, uh, first thing our people see when they come in is make sure that they're wearing their protective face mask. Of course, I'm the only one talking, and so I'm the only one without a mask at this moment. But also, we have on hand our um, temperature taking mechanism that will check everyone's temperature when they come in. And as we go down, uh, coming to the church, we'll notice that we also have every pew Every pew has been designated as a sitting or non-sitting pew. We also have arrows. So we're going to take you um, the correct manner, uh, arrows that take us in one side and around the other. Uh, Mrs. Bryant was a part of that, that national team. And so she will, she will take us from, from here, uh, as I conclude my part of introducing you um, into our into our um, sanctuary. Uh, yes. You'll notice the, the, the non-sitting pews are designated with a blue uh, tape on them and we have, this, we have also the tape on the rug so that no one, the, the, the job, the, 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 uh, what we're trying to do is make sure no one meets anyone, okay, as much as possible. No one, there are times we have to pass, but of course because we are wearing masks, that that helps us in that respect as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brian. Well, we give it over to you now for the next part of the presentation. Good morning. I'm Lady Bryant, and welcome to Antioch. The purpose of these COVID-19 recommendations that my husband and I are presenting today is to ensure the safety of church members by establishing a thorough protocol when in-person worship services reconvenes, of course, following 
the CDC guidelines. I was truly blessed in May of last year to be invited by the West Coast moderator, Reverend Ducksworth, to join this dedicated group of healthcare professionals to work on these COVID-19 recommendations for the reopening of our churches. These are the same guidelines that we used here at Antioch when we opened last year in June. One month prior to the reopening of our church, Pastor Bryant called a meeting with the leadership team, the ushers, and the custodians. Um, in that particular meeting, of course, we discussed the CDC guidelines, and at that time, we discussed who would return to church uh, first. We encouraged members over age 65 and members with underlying medical conditions to stay home and attend church virtually since they were at higher risk. Of course, that has changed a lot now since the rollout of the vaccinations. Children was the last to return to our church. And even when they did, they sat with family of the same household. Now, even still today, for better seating capacity, we still see families of the same household on the same pew, less than six feet apart. Now, if you have a large group of children at your church, you may want to consider children's church, separate children's church. Uh, we also, beside age, um, over age 65, anyone that had been exposed uh, to the virus in the past 14 days, we encouraged them to stay home and attend church virtually. Now, if one family member had tested positive in that household, all members of that same household were encouraged to stay home and attend church virtually. Everyone, as Pastor said on the introduction, must enter the sanctuary wearing a mask. This includes all adults and children age over age two. Everyone must have their temperature checked prior to entering the sanctuary. Um, next, you're gonna see the important role that your ushers will play in the flow of in and out of the sanctuary. <clears throat> in the event, our ushers was given a script. In the event a visitor or a member shows up at church, their temperature is checked, and it's equal or greater than 100. They were given this script to politely say to the visitor or the member, and it reads, for the safety of everyone in the sanctuary, we ask you to defer from entering the sanctuary this morning and follow up with your medical provider. We encourage you to participate in the service virtually. This script is included in the handout that you would get for this presentation. Now, to be honest, we had a couple of incidents like that. But our urshers were so trained until they had the compassion to deliver that message in a nice way. And they were directed to their car to attend the service virtually. Everyone must at all times maintain social distance six feet apart, coming in and out of the sanctuary. No handshakes, no kisses, no hugs, just the fist bumps only. Now, if you are a large mega church, you may want to consider having multiple services on Sundays with limited capacity. Now, if you choose to do this, you should provide the times of your different services, worship services, to limit the capacity in the sanctuary. Members should be encouraged to attend only one service and definite make time between those services to properly clean the sanctuary. Now, we are a small church, and we are present and still meeting three ways. On Sunday, we meet in person. 
We meet by way of Facebook and our 1-800 uh, toll-free conference line. On Tuesday night Bible study, Sunday school, we meet on our toll-free conference line. On Thursday morning, a mission hour, we meet on our toll-free conference line. Try to avoid all those different small meetings um, at the church. Separate meetings can occur on Zoom or on your 1-800 conference uh, line. Preparation of the sanctuary. Pastor mentioned uh, some of the preparation at the beginning of the video. You should have one entrance and one exit. Uh, the four markings um, with the tape should show the direction of the flow, and I think you saw that on the video. We have arrows on the floor indicating the uh, direction of the flow of traffic. Again, our urchins do a very good job in directing everyone in and out. You can use the tape markings on the seats, the pews. Uh, you saw that as you were coming in uh, to direct the traffic and show the available seating. Um, our ushers at our church, our ushers are in charge of seating everyone who enters the sanctuary and they also direct the flow at the end of the service. Your tape marking should start on the ground floor outside so that everyone can still remain six feet apart while they're waiting to get their temperature um, checked. Signage, I think you were able to view it on the uh, video. You should have signs that address maintaining social distance, six feet at all times, face mask required, temperature screen required to enter, and on your empty pews, where they should not be sitting, you should have signs that say, do not sit. And if in your church, if you're using chairs, the chairs should be spaced six foot apart, six feet apart, or if you have several chairs, the ones that they should not sit should have a sign. Um, you notice all about the banner uh, entering the church that talks about social distance. Um, we had a couple of other big banners on the outside that says um, wear masks at all times, which has been taken down for the painting of the church. Uh, all of the pews should be staggered like you saw on the video. All hymn books and Bibles should be removed from the sanctuary. We suggest instead that you project your scriptures and your lyrics from your uh, announcement uh, screen. We suspended the use of printed programs that was passed out every Sunday morning to prevent the spread of the virus. Hand sanitizers, very important. Hand sanitizers should be uh, located throughout the sanctuary, especially at the entrance. You also should have additional masks on hand to provide members and visitors who arrive without no mask. Or maybe they wore a mask from home and the strap broke or something happened to it, you can replace it rather than have them to leave or not enter the sanctuary. Your church should post the CDC guidelines for proper hand hygiene near the church entrance, on bathrooms, church website, and the bulletin boards. This is also a copy is included in the handout. You should refrain from serving food at the present time at your sanctuary in the fellowship hall. Now, this was one of the hardest ones uh, because we know that we are a Baptist church. According to the CDC guidelines, the church service should be reduced to one hour or to one hour and a half. I know um, we're relaxing on that a little in a lot of the churches because of the vaccinations and a whole lot of other things. Um, you just need to keep up with the CDC guidelines and uh, tweak everything according uh, to the guidelines. Music ministry. The CDC recommends a praise team versus a full choir. 10 people or less, six feet apart, now, this depends on the size of your sanctuary. Presently, at our church, 
Every Sunday, we use one musician, three choir members, space six feet apart. Our choir or stand can actually probably have five or six. President, we're using one musician, three choir members. Those choir members are rotated on Sundays. The president of the choir notifies the members who are singing on Sunday. Now, all of our choir members enters the sanctuary and leaves the sanctuary with masks on. They take their masks off only to sing, and while they are not singing, they put their masks back on. All of our choir members have their own microphone. There is no sharing of the microphones. The microphone phone coverings should be removed. When it comes to the pulpit, the pulpit mic is wiped and disinfected in between the ministers or the speaker. Normally, um, our deacon or designated person who's going to do the call to worship and the congregation of prayer uses the mic on the floor. And anytime the mic here is used, it is clean and disinfected in between use. Communion. I know that you can see our communion table set. We continue to do that, but it's just set for presentation. We have not returned to the traditional way of doing communion where the deacons go out in the audience and allow you to get your communion. Our communion, one deacon is designated to pass out the communion as we exit the sanctuary. Each member receive their communion with their hand out, palm up, and the deacon um, put place your communion. We use the prepackaged communion um, cups. Um, also, that deacon wash and sanitize his hands before putting on his gloves, and this process is used also after he finished serving our communion. And our members are just instructed to um, throw away their um, containers after they've used. Some of our members go home, have their communion there. Um, some members um, do it um, even um, at the church, but we're not all in the sanctuary doing it together. We have not gotten back to that process yet. Public offering. We have not returned to the traditional way of doing public offering yet, where all the members get up, pass around the offering table. We um, offering is, your offering is placed in your envelope, is placed in a basket where a deacon is holding as you exit the sanctuary. There is an announcement made every Sunday that there will be no change made so that the flow of exiting the sanctuary continues six feet apart. No one is stopping to make change. You dropped your envelope in the basket as you exit. We keep the flow moving. Now, one of the things I want to say, uh, we've talked about several things. Uh, at our very first meeting, because there was so much said about the flow, our ushers decided to practice that particular day with the leadership team. After our deacons put the blue uh, arrows on the floor and marked off the pews, they practiced until they felt comfortable, until they had worked out all of the kinks, um, because we, um, the way that we are practicing our seating is you don't choose where you want to sit, not during the pandemic. The urshers direct you into the church. Are you first? We seat from the front to the back. And at the end of the service, everyone at the back leaves first. The last to leave the service is the choir members. So if you understand what I'm saying, when the choir members and the individuals up front, when the individuals up front and the choir members leave, the church is empty. Everyone from the back has already exited the sanctuary. 
This prevent uh, you from passing by uh, individuals unnecessary. So your urchins would want to uh, practice uh, that. Offering, I said, is accepted on the way out and on like today, it's Communion Sunday. One deacon was receiving the offering, the flow still moving, another deacon was six feet away passing out the communion. And it keeps the flow moving. Custodians were also present. Our custodians were given a COVID-19 cleaning checklist to ensure the safety of the church members by establishing a thorough review of how and what should be cleaned and disinfected in the sanctuary according to the CDC guidelines. And this handout is included, uh, this checklist is included for your custodians in the handout. Every time the sanctuary is clean, that checklist is done, all of the items that they need to clean, how they need to clean it is checked off, is date, dated and signed. And you will receive a copy of that. Now, last but not least, if you don't already have the supplies on hand, <clears throat> these are the supplies that you definitely need prior to reopening your church. Number one, Pastor mentioned that coming in, you need to purchase more than one non-contact, no-touch thermometers. I think we got ours on Amazon. Um, at that time, it's been almost a year ago, we got them on Amazon. Um, it was sort of like a waiting list for them, but uh, now you probably can purchase them uh, anywhere. You're gonna need to have hand sanitizers, especially at the entrance and throughout the sanctuary. You need Lysol spray, Lysol wipes, bleach wipes, gallons of bleach, disposable gloves, disposable masks, alcohol solution at least 70%. Most of the supplies now you can get, we were having an issue a year ago getting the supplies. It was a limited amount you can get. You could not hardly get them in most of the stores. Uh, we had to try and order it online, but we got an abundance of supplies to keep on hand at all times. Now, a lot has changed and still changing every day since the vaccination rollout. Just make sure you keep abreast of the current CDC guidelines and make your decisions accordingly. I know this was a lot of information to digest at one time, but you can download the um, CDC COVID-19 recommendation. Uh, it's from the West Coast with the uh, healthcare professionals that I work with, and it can help guide you. Everything that I have said today is in that handout. And we know uh, we have new CDC guidelines about now not wearing your mask outside uh, among vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals or in a small gathering. Uh, but you just need to keep reading, keep listening every day and I do hope that this information can assist you to transition back into your sanctuary safely. I pray God speed as you do this. I, Pastor and I are available at any time through email. You probably have his email and our cell phone numbers. If you have questions, of any kind um, to um, ask us. And I just want to show you a couple of signs that you can go to the website. You can download them. If you don't want to laminate the signs, you can just go type in um, CDC signage, um, social distance, please wear the face mask, face mask, please wear a face mask. This is for the children. Please wear a face mask attention temperature required to enter the sanctuary. Uh, if you don't want to laminate, you can buy those sheet protectors, 
slip them in. That's basically what we have on all of our pews where you cannot sit. It says, do not sit. Thank you very much. This has been a pleasure, and I hope it can assist you in transitioning back into your sanctuary. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Bryant. We appreciate the opportunity of Dr. Ramsey and moderator Philpott for sharing these, um, this information. And uh, the blessing is when you have those who work in the area, work smarter, not harder. And um, that, that script that she presented to you, what we had in our initial meeting way back on the um, fourth, fourth Sunday in March of, of 2020, we met the very next week and began to put all of these items in, into place not all of them, but we began to put some things in place and she became a part of that state team, that's national team, to help black churches come back together. Now, my prayer is that you would please um, download that information. I believe she's gonna make it available for um, Pastor Ford, our tech specialist, uh, that you can get uh, a copy of it. And we bid you Godspeed and pray that all the things that need to be done at your church will go well, as you be vigilant, and we pray that God would keep every one of us. Let me ask Dean Green to come now and close this session with a word of prayer. And um, uh, we, we certainly are glad that um, we had this opportunity, had this opportunity to, to share with you today. Dean Green will come and, and lead us in a word of prayer as we close this moment. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, our fathers, in the name of Jesus, we come at this appointed time and place thanking you for this chance, this opportunity, Father God, once again to, to be in your presence, Father God. We thank you for your blessings, your grace, and your mercy, Father God. We thank you for this opportunity to share with brothers and sisters throughout the land, Father God, as we go through these uncertain times. We realize, Father God, you have all power in your hand guide us through these troubled times, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We ask you to bless everyone that's on these airways uh, right now, Father God, and bless those who will get the word later on, Father God. We need you, Father God, as we go to our destination at the end of time, Father God. We thank you for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the one who died on Calvary's cross, that we may have a right to eternal life. Father God, when it's all said and done, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. As we come to introduce uh, the preacher for the hour, and we want you to know that he's no stranger to the Florida East Coast uh, Missionary Baptist Association. He served uh, uh, as our State Congress of Christian Education as well as our District Congress of Christian education. And so we thank God that he is one that is well capable of rightly dividing the word of truth. We understand that God's word teaches us and admonish us that how can we hear without a preacher and how can he preach except he has been sent. And so we thank God for this sent man of God that have come to share with us in our own Southern Fellowship on this evening. He's a gospel preacher. He come by way of the Second Canaan Missionary Baptist Church in the city of Miami. We know that he can preach and he will preach. And we're asking that you would just um, give an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. None other than my brother and my friend, the Reverend Jeffrey Mack. Hear ye him as he comes. Amen. Once again, we thank God for this opportunity to be able to stand once again and let proclaim his word to say to our moderator, Toby T. Philpott, cabinet to our women's auxiliary president, president, amen, Sister Gloria Jackson, amen, Davis, 
Abe and to our Southern Union uh, President, Dr. W. M. Graham. We want to thank him for the opportunity to be able to stand, amen, and proclaim the word to Deacon Raymond, amen, Davis, who is our uh, uh, layman's president, to our Congress president, amen, Pastor Parrott, amen, and also to Raymond Smith, I'm sorry, and also to, to Pauline Scott, who is our women's auxiliary uh, president for our Southern Union. We're just thankful for the opportunity to be able to stand and proclaim the word. The word is found in St. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, but for the consolation, we'll just read verses 1 through uh, 7. It simply says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. I want to simply talk for pretty much after the Holy Spirit by chapter John 6, verse 1 through 14, I want, to, I want to talk about he already knows. He already knows. Heavenly knows. Father, we thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, as always, for every opportunity to allow us to be able to come to lift up your name. We thank you. Pray that you would hide us behind the cross that they might be able to see you through me. Pray that the words of our mouth and meditation our heart will be acceptable in our sight. For Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. So God, we pray now as always that your word may go forth with simplicity yet with power. That it may convict, convert, convince, and compel. Someone may cry out their wicked ways, saying, I yield, I yield, I can't hold out no longer. Thou art the potter, we are the clay. Continue to shape and mold us into what you would have us to be. We'll be so careful and so kind to continually give you all praise and glory. In your son Jesus' name, we pray thank you. Thank you. And we claim victory. And those who love the Lord say, Amen. 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 He already knows. The setting of this great miracle of the five loaves and the two fish started because Jesus was performing miracles everywhere he went. People were no longer just intrigued by him, but they were influenced and they were addicted to him. Even the scribes and the Pharisees were now following Jesus, through, though for different reasons. Jesus' fame had spread throughout Jerusalem and the surrounding cities. Jesus had just healed the man that, led, that had laid beside the pool of Bethesda for over 30 years, and Jesus commanded him, and he said, take up his bed and walk. The man was made whole, and the world began to spread that Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath day. To the religious faction, this was against the oracles. How could he heal on the Sabbath day? But Jesus gives them a lecture and puts them in their place, and then he departs from them. Yeah. The Bible says in St. John chapter 6 and verse 1, after these things, yeah, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and it is here that a great multitude followed him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says in verse 2. It says, because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. Jesus already knew that some were only following him because of what he was able to do for them. Yeah, yeah if you don't mind, let me ask you the question. Well, what's your reason for coming to, to church and hanging around church? Well, what, what's your reason for reason about, are you just hanging around the master because of what he can do for you or what he has done for you? Are you hanging around the master because I was in the help of him because you want a relationship with God? I want to be closer to you, not because of what you've done, not because of what you're able to do, but because of who you are. I wish somebody knew who he was. He's a healer, he, he's a doctor, but most of all, he's a friend that sticks closer. Yeah. 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 Nobody else 
comes around, he'll be there with you. Nobody else wants to talk to you. He'll be there. I follow him because I love him because he first loved me. Yes, sir. It is because we follow him, because we've seen Jesus do things in our lives and the lives of others. And, and you figure if you hang around, that it may happen to you. If I just hang around somebody being blessed, maybe, maybe the blessing will follow me. If I just hang around somebody that, that's doing well, maybe God will bless me. Listen, I don't want just residual blessings. I want sometimes the blessing to come straight from God. I don't mind receiving an intercessory blessing, but every now and I want God to bless me. Yes, yeah. yeah, I want the blessing to fall fresh on me like it's falling on somebody else. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. Maybe, maybe you just don't want to, to be left out because, because others are, are coming and some have changed and some haven't. Maybe you, you want to change, but you're afraid that you may lose some people in your life. So therefore, you follow from a distance. But you can't be following the master from a distance and be afraid to lose people. Because as you draw closer to the master, you're going to be separated from people, places, and things. God is going to make a transition in your life where even if you don't want to, he's going to move some people out of your life. Because you've got to understand everybody that comes in your life doesn't come to stay. Some come for a reason, some come for a season, and some come for a lifetime. But you've got to be willing to let God be the judge and let God decide who will stay and who will go. You know, I always say, thank God for those that come into my life. But then I thank God for the ones he takes out of my life, but the memory that we had while we were together. Because nobody comes to stay all the time. But there are some uh -huh. yes. that God placed in your life to be there the rest of your life. Yes. Yeah. I wish somebody had it with them. There are some people, not a whole lot of people, maybe one, two, or three, won't be five, but a few people God placed in your life that will be there for the rest of your life. Yes. They may not be there all, all around you all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But when you need them. Yeah. They're right there. They're right there. Whatever you need, when you need, they're right there. They can help you, they'll help you get help. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever your reason is, you need to understand that the master, he already knows. Yeah. Mm. Verse 3 through 5 says, and I'm not going to be long, and Jesus went up on the mountain. And there he sat with his disciples. Mm -hmm. It said, now the Passover and a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he says to Philip, mm -hmm. where shall we thy bread? Mm -hmm. That be made. Yeah. It's amazing how, how many times we find the Lord doing this sort of thing because he's omniscient. He he knows huh. oh. uh -huh. John 4, he says, I must leave. Dr. Whitehead go through Samaria. They, the disciples didn't understand, but Jesus understood that there was a woman he was going to meet at the well and he had to go to Samaria. So when the disciples went away, he went and had his evangelistical message with this woman and when he changed her life, she ran and told somebody, Jesus knows where you are, what you need, when you need, and how you need it, and he will show up. Yes, he will. Yeah, in your darkest hour, when the doctors walk out the room, he'll show up. When, when your husband or your wife walk out on you, he'll show up. When your children give you the backside, he'll show up. When your job gives you a peace slip, he'll show up. Even when things are going well, he'll show up. When you get a raise on your job, he, I'm going to hit that while Raising your job, he'll show up. When he's blessing you to wake up to see another day, God will show up. He showed up this morning. I woke up with my mind. He will show up because he, he knows all things. Not only does he know all things, listen, but he's in control of all things. When, when we learn how to take our hands off, that's when you let go and let God have it. As long as you got 
got your hands on it, he'll let you think you're in control. Yes. How many of us can bear witness when we have our hands on the reins, things don't always go well. Yes. So, yes. So sometimes it goes wrong, it's like having a car that's out of line. As long as you keep your hands on the wheel, you think you're going straight, but you think it's a line. But as soon as you take your hand off the wheel, it's beating to the left or to the right. Because you're trying to hold on and be in control when all you need to do is just go to the mechanic and get in front of the line. Amen. Jesus said, when you're out of line, yes. take your hands off, yes. see where you're going astray, come and have a little talk with me, and I'll line you back. Yes. 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 He said, I'll line you back. Uh, he, he knows what, what he's going to do even before he does it. Does it. I love to watch cops and robbers uh, shows. I, I like uh, Law and Order CI. Uh, I, I like Special Victim Unit and Blue Bloods and uh, NYPD Blues. But, but one thing, one thing I found out that, that in the interrogations, you can call us, in, in the room, they ask certain questions. Yeah. They say on March 5th, Two o'clock, 2021, 20, where were you? Uh -huh. <laughs> when they ask to the get yeah, certain right questions, uh, yeah. they already know the answer. They just want to see yeah. what you are going to say <laughs> when they ask you a specific question. And the master wants to know that the, the same thing. All right. What do you want? Yeah. But he already knows mm -hmm. what you need. Yeah. He just want to see yeah. how bad do you need. Yeah. What you want? <laughs> what you want? Here, here, here when I text Jesus, ask Philip in verse 5, he says, Philip, where? Yeah. Shall we buy bread that thee may eat? Mm -hmm. I know the great multitude coming. I, I, I know I take you up on the mountain and I see the multitude coming. I, I know there's no 7-Eleven, there's no Starbucks, there's no Winn-Dixie, there's nothing around. But Philip, mm -hmm. you see the multitude. Where shall we go and buy bread that they may eat? Where? Yeah. Where? Mark 6.35. Five and 37 said, when the day was now far spent, his disciple came to him and said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. Mm. They said, send them away. Oh, let them go home that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But verse 37 said, but he answered and said to them, you mm -hmm. give them something. To eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and, and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? 200 denarii. It's only in today's time about 10 cents per denarii. Uh -huh. So they got less than $30. And they say, Master, this is not. But Jesus had compassion on the crowd, and the disciples said, listen, it's late, Jesus. I understand you've got compassion, but, but let them go home so, so they can eat or get something on the way. Give them a sandwich on the way home or, or find some, some vendor along the way to get something. So when Jesus told Philip and the disciples to feed them, he was testing Philip. Yeah. Because verse 6 said he knew. Yeah. What he, Jesus knew what he was going to do. Remember that the disciples had witnessed the conversion of the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4. Uh -huh. They had watched him cleanse the leper in Mark chapter 1, verse 40 through 45. They seen Jesus heal Peter's mother-in-law in Mark 1, 29 through 34. They seen Jesus calm a storm in Mark 8, 23 through 27. Jesus healed a demon possessed in Matthew 8, 28 and 34. And now in John 6, 6, Jesus said, but this he said to test them for he knew. What he was doing. Mm. Yeah. Mess 
that's the Bible said. He said, he said this to stretch, there it is, yeah. to stretch Philip's faith because he already knew what he was going to do. The NIV says he asked us only to test him. The message says to stretch, stretch his faith. NIV says to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. That, that, that makes me shout to, to know that no matter what you're going through, yes, sir. Jesus already knows yes, sir. what he's going through. Yeah. All he wants to do is test your faith. Yeah. Stretch your faith. For us to realize that he is the only one that can work out our situation. Have you ever had your back against the wall? Yes, sir. Didn't know how you, you were going to make it. You couldn't go right, yes, couldn't go left, Jesus. couldn't back up, couldn't go forward. All you had was two other things to do. That was to bow down and look up. Yes. How many know when you get in a dark place and yes. don't know how you were going to make it, when you throw up your hands and say, Lord, have mercy, or Lord, I don't know what to do. The Lord said, that's all I've been waiting for. If for you to take your hands off of it and let me stretch your face, you get too comfortable where you are. And every now and then, God says, as he said to Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Lord, you don't know. Do you? Every now and then, God simply wants to know how deep is your love. Yeah. How, how far from the help? How far will you go? What will you do? If even if I don't bless you right now, but what I already done, how much more will you do for me? If he don't bless me anymore, he's done enough right now, and I bless the Lord all oh, my soul and all that he is good. Yes, yes. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. I, I got to think of right here. This ain't my message, but, but I'm just excited about the latter part of my life because I believe that greater is on. Yeah. Matter of fact, it ain't on the way. It's here right now because uh, when you serve the Lord, uh, serving the Lord will pay off. Uh, not after a while. But... Yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel a right now blessed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's coming. Not just my way, but it's coming your way. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage somebody. He, he already knows what he's going to do in your life. Uh, you just got to stay in the will of God uh, and let God your faith when you can't see your way trust him when you can walk your way stand in his will and watch God work yes he will thank you Lord hallelujah John 5 19 to 20 then Jesus answered and said to them most assuredly I said to you the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do for whatever he does the Son also does in like manner. Yes. For the Father, he says, loves the Son huh? and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Genesis 22 is a prime example of what Jesus was talking about. In Genesis 22, verses 1 through 5, it says sometimes later, God tested Abraham. Mm. And he said to him, Abraham, he says, here I am. Then God said, okay, take your son, mm -hmm. to Jackson, your only son, whom you love, yeah. Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you uh -huh. that God already knew what mountain he was going to go to. Uh -huh. yes. But Abraham didn't know. Uh -huh. But the Bible says, early the next moment, yeah. Abraham got up, loaded his dungeons, because he took, took with him two of his servants that his son hiding, and when he had, had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he sat out on the place. God had told him about. Yeah. Y'all missed that. He got the wood, got the servant, uh -huh. got the son, loaded up a donkey, and took off to a place that God told him 
a battle. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Y'all missed it. Yeah. He gets up early, yeah. cuts the wood, yeah. gets his son, takes two servants, loads up a dungeon, and takes off to a place that God told him about. Yeah. He didn't go to the place that God told him to go. Yeah. Yeah. He went to a place that God told him a about. Yeah. Somebody missed it. You, you got about now blessing on your way. Right. God hadn't showed you everything. He, he just showed you something that, that he's about. My, 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 my. About to do in your future. And if you just stay in the will of God, continue to do the will of God, continue to walk by faith, God will bless you with an about blessing that when you get there, God will already provide you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take suffering. He goes to the place. That God showed him. And the Bible says in Genesis 22 for on the third day, third day. Abraham looked up yeah. and saw the place in the distance. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. He's going to a place mm -hmm. that God told him about. Yeah. And the third day, Sister Garrett, he lifts up his eyes. And sees the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God never described the place. How did he know mm. that was the place that God told him about? Yeah. There's something about mm. being obedient mm -hmm. to the word yeah. and the will of God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it is. You, you don't know. Why are you where you are? Yeah. But there's something about yeah. that, that place yeah. that when you get there, uh -huh. God is already there. Yeah. Yeah. 27 years ago, this is where God had, had placed me. Knowing God had placed me. Whatever I have to go through while I'm here, I'll go through it. I don't know everything. Didn't know everything for 27 years. All had good, bad, up, down, in and out. Went through it all. But one thing I do know, this is the place The word, the will, and the way of God, and God will bless you where you are to the good and the bad, the up and the down. Whatever you need, God will survive. Yes, he will. Look at yes, he, he, he goes up, he tells the servants, y'all stay here, me and the lad, we're going to worship, but we share. Yes, There's something about this place. Yes. I know what God told me. I know I feel my help. I know he told me to go up to the place, but now that I'm here, you all stay here. Me and the son, we're going up to worship, but we shall, not I shall, but <laughs> Somebody said, we shall over. <laughs> Come some, some, some day. You, you, you got to know that God will, I feel like told that God will make a way. Yes, here it is, they get up on the mountain. I hear son saying, saying, Daddy, I, I see, I see the wood and I see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? Oh, I feel this thing here. He said, son, don't worry about it. God will provide. Somebody need to hear that today. That no matter what you're going through, just keep on walking by faith. Because God will provide everything you need. He is, he's up on the mountain. He lays the sun down. He puts the wood under him.
Hit him outrage both hands. Yes. Yes. You ever been through something that it was so hard to, you just wanted to, to throw in the towel and every time you tried to throw it in, you, you couldn't let go because you couldn't let go of your faith. And when you wanted to give up, God said, hold on. When, when you wanted to walk away, he said, stay there. When you wanted to cry, he wiped the tears. The one that you raised, you gave them the best, you sacrificed so much for them. Sometimes they get to a certain age, they turn their back on you. Sometimes the one that you've done the least for them will be the one that will be there. But sometimes God will test you through your children. Sometimes he'll test you through sickness. Sometimes you'll have doctors shaking their heads and we've done all we can do. Sometimes they give you diagnosis. Sometimes they're so cold, they have no compassion or sympathy. But then God reminds you through the word of God, I am a doctor. Yeah. He said, that's the woman in Mark 5, 25. She'll tell you, you don't have to have a conversation. Just have enough faith to press your way. Ah. God will heal your body. That's the woman that was going to a funeral on her way out of town to bury her son. And the master was coming in. And the master met her going out. And he touched the river. And the Bible said the boy got up. God will meet you where you need. Yeah. He'll test you through, through tragedy and, and trials and, and tribulations. Yes, sir. So first Peter 4, 12 and 13, I'm leaving. He said, Beloved, do not think it strange. Uh -huh. He said, Concerning the fiery trial, which is the trial. Yeah. He said, that Though some strange thing happened to you, yeah. he said, Beloved, do not think it strange. Well, you, you got to understand that all of us yeah. uh -huh. are going to go through some trials. Yes, yes. But you can't count it strange when you go through uh -huh. <laughs> Thinking you, you're the only one because somebody else is worse off. Uh -huh. He said this, it's not strange, but sometimes the, the same thing that, that happened to you is somebody else a few days, a few years ago, have gone through the, the, the same thing. Yeah. And that's why every now and then it is good to have testimony service. Yeah. Not, not testimony, but, but testimony service. Because sometimes your testimony can be a test to help somebody else. Yeah. Somebody may yeah, I feel look at you and, and hear your testimony and came to church with trouble in their life and tears in their eyes and the, the burden was heavy but when they, they, they hear how God is working it out for you yeah. <laughs> when they see how yeah, y'all broke up but, but yet God is still got your head up yeah. when you make up your mind I don't care who knows what I'm going through <laughs> but because I know that God will make a way yeah. I remember one time the whistle would give a testimony. She said, I had a time when I couldn't talk. They didn't know how I was going to make it. But when I heard her say, I don't want no pity party. I just want the church to pray for me. Because I know God will make a way. I don't know how you feel the mind of it. But every now and then, you ought not be ashamed to tell somebody how the Lord is blessing you. Not when you come out. But you got to be able to, to tell them why you're going through. That God, he will make a way. Am I right about it? I know I've got more bills than I do finance. But I want to let you know that the God I serve, even though I got more outgo than I do income, I want you to know that God he already knows because sometimes he takes your outgo compared to gives your income to open your eyes to realize there's some things you've got to let go in order to let your outgo come down so you got income to live but some of us in here we won't let go we want to hold on to material 
material things. Yeah. Well, but God already knows. Yeah. You don't need all you have. Yeah. You got what you want. Yeah. You're trying to keep up with somebody else. Yeah. But when you learn yeah. how to let go yeah. and let God have his way, yeah. anybody can bear witness. Yeah. He'll turn your finance around. Yeah. Yeah. When you learn, yeah. it's not about material things. Yeah. It's not about the cost. Yeah. But it's about my Savior. Yeah. And if you learn how yeah. to, to let God have his way, God will yeah. stop making wings yeah. out of no way. Yeah. And before you know it, yeah. you've got more income yeah. than you do outgo. Yeah. That's what God will do. Yeah. He'll turn it around yeah. in your favor. Yeah. But I hear Peter saying, that, yeah. but rejoice yeah. to the extent. Yeah, that you'll partake yeah, of Christ's suffering yeah, that when his glory yeah, is revealed yeah, you may also yeah, be glad with a seed and joy yeah. I don't know about you yeah, but I made up my mind yeah, I'm going to live yeah, for the word of God yeah, I'm going to live yeah, stay in the will of God yeah, because I found out yeah, when you stay in the word yeah, and the will of he already knows yeah. before you. He already knows what obstacles are in your way. But if you be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord, and as much as you know, your neighbor is not in vain. God already knows how He's gonna bless you. Anybody in here got a right now? I've been down, I cried my tears, but the Lord, He wiped the tears from my eyes. He gave me a new one, gave me a new tongue. How did it here? Know that the Lord, He'll straighten you up. Put a smile on your face, let you walk around, let you live right. But I hear Jesus, said in John 5, 19. He said the son can do nothing to have himself, but what he sees the father do for whatever the he does. The son also does in like manner. John 6 and 6. But this he said to test him, to stretch him, for Jesus knew what he was going to do. Philip asked him all we have. It's less than 30 dollars. That's not enough to feed everybody. They forgot. They forgot, brother. Philip was looking at money. The other disciples, he was looking at the two fish and the five body loan. They were calling up intangible, visible things. But they forgot. They served a God that was able to do more than He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. You can ask hope of faith. That's what God will do. So he tested their faith. He said, I tell you what, let the men sit down. The Bible said that the grass was thick. I don't know why I put it there, but the grass was thick. They sat on cushion in the grass. They brought the two fish. Five body long. I wish you could have been there. Look at the disciples standing around Jesus. He takes the fish. He breaks the fish. And he pans it to the disciples. And he distributes to them. He takes the bread. Breaks the bread. Bless the bread. Pass it to the disciples. They pass it out. Can't you see them? Their faith being stretched. They know what he gave. But as they walk with the basket, gave them some fish, gave them some bread. As they walk through the crowd, gave them some fish, gave them some bread. And when it was all over, Jesus was trying to show them, I can do more than you could ever think. I already know what they mean. He said, pick up the fragments so that nothing be lost. He wanted them to see that he did exceedingly and abundantly. I gotta leave you now. 
Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. Thank you, Southern Youth. Thank you, Frank Woodman. Thank you, Congress Corps. Thank you, Second Kingdom. But I got to leave you now when I let you know I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Let me know how to live on the house to do more than I can ask you. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave the house. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's it right there. I'm in the whosoever. Anybody in here in the whosoever. His integrity. Yes, sir. He says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But in the end, Jesus tells God, tells his friends, Job is going to intercede on your behalf. So when people criticize you, when people talk about you, when people don't know why you go through what you go through, you hold fast your integrity. God will see you through the same one that talked about you. Yes. The same ones you have to intercede on their behalf yes. and do it with a smile on your face. Yes. Why? Because yes. God yes. is in control. Yes. There might be somebody here under the office that want to invite you to come to Jesus just as you are. 
I don't know about you, but I need to know. To remind us that he already knows. He knows your present, he knows the past, and he knows your future. But if you're here, you're confused. You're out of the yard. Why you come to him? You got that southern union and you tap in and invite him to come in your life. Say, I want to be saved. If you're on Facebook Live, accept him as your person. I know you've been hurt by the church. I know you've been hurt by some leaders. But I come to tell you, look, look beyond the church. Look beyond Amen. the church. Amen. Look to the end. From what's coming, your help. help. All of us have our frailties and our faults. No, no. But the one thing my father always say, I'd rather be in the mess trying to get cleaned up yeah. and be on the outside and be lost. That's it. And every day's not going to be a good day. But you're going to have more good days than bad days. Yeah. But you just got to learn how to turn it over to the Lord. To the Lord. And he'll separate you from people, yes. places, yes. and things. Yes, he will. He'll take the tangibles away to let you know he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask. He's able to do it. You will just come to him just as you are. Come by not a candidate for baptism, Christmas. But the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap and pray. Thank you, Southern Union. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to share.